What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is a series where I go into great detail with all of the stats, as well as some excellent attachment combinations for every gun in Modern Warfare 2. And in today's episode, we're going to be moving on to the brand new Lockman Shroud SMG. And let's just dive right into the damage profile. With this one, we've got an interesting mix of body multipliers. You can see there's a difference between the upper torso and shoulders versus the lower torso and arms, and also limbs are dealing less damage than that. But generally speaking, as long as you're not hitting leg shots, Shots. Up close and personal, it's going to be a three shot kill or a one burst kill. And then beyond that, unless you're able to hit just those upper torso, neck, or head shots, it's likely going to be taking you four shots to kill or potentially even more. And speaking of headshots, on their own, they're not really that useful, but mixing them in with other body multipliers may help you maintain that one burst kill potential. Now, let's get into our rate of fire, and remember, this is a three round burst, but within the burst, our rate of fire is 714 rounds per minute, and then on top of that, we have a tiny burst delay at just 10 milliseconds. This is a very, very short burst delay, so as far as burst guns go, this is a very spammable burst gun. And what this means is if we manage to get a one burst kill, we're killing extremely fast at 168 milliseconds. However, if you require that fourth shot to kill and you have to wait for that little burst delay, it's now gonna kill in 262 milliseconds, which is quite a slow time to kill if we're looking at really close quarters gunfights. At mid to longer ranges though, that's still a respectable time to kill. Next, let's have a look at our range values here. And as we can see, that first damage range where you're essentially guaranteed a one burst kill as long as you don't hit leg shots, that extends out to about 12 meters, which is not bad for an SMG. And that's really where this gun tends to shine. However, our one burst kill potential to the body, if we're hitting upper torso shots, this will extend out to 20 meters, which is not bad as well. And then anything beyond that's gonna take you at least four shots to kill. Now let's move on to our recoil, which is quite important for a burst gun, and quite surprisingly, this is a very accurate gun. Not only is there not a whole lot of recoil within each burst, it also doesn't tend to climb super heavy, Obviously, it will climb a little bit over time if you're firing like a full magazine, but generally speaking, especially for an SMG, I was surprised at how accurate this gun is. Now, everything up until this point has been talking about this gun in its burst mode, which is the default mode with it. However, if you switch it to semi-auto, which is its alternate fire mode, it significantly changes our damage profile, so I did want to take a look at this as well. So with this, our rate of fire cap that I was able to measure in game was 541 rounds per minute. I realize this is a lower number than what something like sim.gg shows. However, I was unable to ever get faster than this value. So I believe this is the true cap in game. And with this, we now have a two shot kill potential to the body up close if we hit upper torso or upper arm. And this will give us a time to kill potential of 111 milliseconds, which is ridiculously fast. That is almost an insta melt right there. However, for many of the gunfights you'll find, it will tend to take three shots to kill to the body. Like if you get beyond 12 meters or if you accidentally hit a stomach shot, for instance, now it's gonna take you three shots to kill. And with this, we still get a very respectable time to kill value at 222 milliseconds. Additionally, in semi-auto mode, we have a very, very accurate gun on our hands. There is almost no recoil with this. And it is worth mentioning, all of our range drop-off points are exactly the same as when we're in burst mode. We're just dealing more damage within each of those damage ranges. So overall, semi-auto, I do consider to be an excellent option on this if you have a good trigger finger and if you enjoy using semi-autos. But at the same time, I find the burst mode to be quite effective and I enjoy it in burst as well. And with that, everything from now on is going to apply to both full auto as well as semi-auto. This is just going to be the miscellaneous stats on this gun. Let's have a look at our hip fire next. And this actually has the worst hip fire spread in the SMG category. However, this is only while standing still. A big thing to point out with this gun is while moving, our hip fire spread doesn't really increase much at all. Whereas with all of the other SMGs, that hip spread will increase quite noticeably while moving. And as a result, this gun is actually pretty solid at hip firing, if you don't mind getting like a two burst kill on somebody. Of course, if you are trying to get that one burst kill, you typically don't want to leave that to chance. After that, taking a look at our bullet velocity, unfortunately, this is very slow. This is the slowest in the SMG category at 250 milliseconds, and this will significantly hold this gun back at longer ranges, especially against moving targets. And this is something to be aware of. The hit detection is going to feel off at longer ranges. So you generally want to keep yourself up close and personal, but also it's worth noting that the enemy skulls will not appear when you kill enemy players. They won't be able to see the skull where their teammates died if you shoot them with this gun. 
After that, though, let's get into our handling stats, and we have an amazing aim down sight speed at 190 milliseconds. This is very, very fast. Our sprint to fire times are standard for SMGs, though, but that's not a bad thing. These are quite fast. And unfortunately, our reload add time is a little on the slow side at 1.88 seconds. As for our mobility stats, our base movement speed is noticeably above average for SMGs, it's quite solid. Our sprint speed is bang on average for SMGs. And finally, our aim walking speed is really good with this gun, and you can make an amazing strafe build with this, which I will be showing off in just a little bit. And that right there is going to wrap it up for all of the base stats of the gun without any attachments. Now let's get into some of the unique attachments, and we're going to start this off with barrels and how they impact our ranges. With the first barrel, the 170mm grapple barrel, this will increase our damage ranges by 28%. That's an amazing increase. Whereas the 114mm Dark Star barrel will reduce our ranges by 11%. It's worth noting, both of these barrels are also suppressed, just like the base version of this gun. It has an integrated suppressor, so that is another upside to using this gun overall, is you get a free suppressor with it. And just in case you missed it, integrated suppressors are now working properly, so you won't disable your ghost perk when you fire with an integrated suppressor. But next up with these barrels, let's have a look at recoil. And with that 170 millimeter barrel, you can see this tightens up our bullets a little bit. They don't spread out quite as much, so you're gonna get more consistent one burst kills. Whereas with the 114 millimeter Dark Star barrel, this one slightly harms our recoil, but overall still a very accurate and easy to control gun within the ranges you should be using this gun. But then finally, for the barrel attachments, let's have a look at how they impact our aim down sight speeds. And with the 170 millimeter barrel, this significantly harms our aim down sight time. It's now 302 milliseconds, which is a pretty big increase and the big reason I tend to stay away from this barrel. Whereas with the Dark Star barrel, this will slightly improve our aim down sight speed. It's now 169 milliseconds with this barrel. And speaking of aim down sight speeds, let's have a look at the magazine attachments and how they impact our aim down sight speed. With the 15 round mag, that'll drop our aim down sight time down to 165 milliseconds. With the 40 round mag, this will increase it to 210 milliseconds. And the 50 round drum mag will increase it to 220 milliseconds. And now with all of that out of the way, it's time to move into some great attachment combinations I put together for you guys. And the first one I wanted to share is my Hyper Aggression build. With this, we're using the Dark Star Barrel, the 1 milliwatt Artemis Laser, the Stockless Mod, Overpressured Ammunition tuned for Bullet Velocity, so we get a slight increase there, as well as Damage Range, and the Shark Fin Under Barrel, which just helps with that idle sway, but it's also going to help us with recoil stabilization due to our tuning. And then everything else, we're tuning for Aim Walking Speed and Aim Walking Steadiness whenever available. And with this particular gun, our aim down sight speed is ridiculously fast at 131 milliseconds. Our sprint out time is also very, very quick. Our aim walking movement speed is one of the highlights on this. It's 4.05 meters per second, which is really, really fast. So you can strafe in a gunfight extremely effectively. And our sprint speed is also nicely improved. So this is just great for being as aggressive as possible. Surprisingly, the recoil isn't that bad with this either. So you can still stretch out to those mid-range gunfights and just get two burst kills all day long. And I really like this particular build if you're trying to be as aggressive as possible. This would also be a great build for a shipment, for instance. As for the next build I've got for you guys though, this is my more balanced build where I kept things a little more reasonable in various areas. With this we've got the 1 milliwatt quick fire laser, the FT mobile stock, the LM Cronus grip, the armor piercing ammo again tuned for damage range and bullet velocity, as well as the phase 3 grip tuned for recoil stabilization. With this we just get nice balanced stats, our recoil is very good here, you can get one burst kills very consistently within 12 meters, and you're quite accurate even extending the ranges out. And the thing with this build is it's great in burst mode and it's also excellent in semi-auto mode. So if you want to use it in semi-auto, I definitely recommend going with this build rather than the previous one, which might give you a little too much recoil bounce in semi-auto mode. So there you have it, that is my more balanced all around build with this gun. And with that, that's finally gonna wrap it up for today's gun guide on the brand new Lockman Shroud. As for my thoughts on this gun, I think it's a little weird that they just sort of reused the Lockman sub or the MP5 model and slapped a barrel on it and called it a new gun. But at the end of the day, statistically, it's a completely different gun that plays nothing like the Lockman sub and I actually really enjoy it. I enjoy using this gun. I think it was a great addition into the game. There's nothing else in the game that's quite like this, like a really fast bursting SMG, highly mobile sort of gun. And I really appreciate the fact that they brought it to the game. I just kind of wish it had a different weapon model attached to these stats. Now, of course, those are just my thoughts on this, and I'd love to hear what you guys think about the Lockman Shroud in the comments down below. 
Also, I just want to point out, I know I skipped over the M13C gun guide. I will circle back to that after I cover the Lockman Shroud and the Daemon, just because those are the hot thing at the moment, and I kind of missed the hype for the M13C. So there we go. If you enjoyed this video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.